Good reading, kiddo. So, I, um, this past weekend, past weekend, it's still the weekend, it's still, <laughs> I'm recording this on, like, on Saturday night. So you might have noticed, I had a community post last, last night, so like, this morning. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm still, like, a little affected. Um, not, like, high, but I feel, like, worn a little bit raw. Uh, I had shrooms. I had shrooms last night. And the experience was actually delightful. It was actually fucking great. It was, it was marvelous. I, I recommend the experience. It's not the same as like a weed high. I don't know, from, from like all the rhetoric that I hear about it, and I'm gonna try to be coherent in this fucking drivel <laughs> that's like spewing from my face hole. I'm going to try to be coherent and I'm gonna try not to edit this like to the umph degree um, so that things are as organic as possible. But I might end up needing to do some editing. It, it depends. It, yeah. How, however it goes, it fucking goes. I recommend the experience because it was really fucking nice. But going into it, I was, I had my apprehensions. Like anytime you hear about an experience that's going to be like, you know, six to eight hours, that's a whole ass work day, nigga. Like, I, I don't know. Do I have the time <laughs> to dedicate to uh, just uh, like being high for this long? That's a long time to just be fucking gone. And like, I spend a lot of time gone, but like gone like that. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I did it with a friend that I haven't seen in a really long time. And it's a friend that I fucking trust with my goddamn life. It was really nice to see her and to hang out. And you've, you've seen her before. Um, I have like a video where we're, we're tubing. That's my tubing, nigga. <laughs> we be tubing. To try to fucking explain the experience. I might, I'm going to do another video on this. I'm going to like kind of coalesce the thoughts. It's just like the thoughts are fresh right now. And they're not going to be as fresh later. And as, as, as raw as like right now. I'm going to lose a lot of shit in translation between high and, you know, fucking sober, <laughs> lucid. Uh, there, there's going to be a, some things lost in translation just because I don't have the words for some of the stuff that I experienced. And maybe I, I do. I do. I do have the fucking words for it. It's just that um, I feel like I won't necessarily have like all the, like, the like the emotion behind the experience because like there was there was some emotion some fucking emotions and like mostly just good like everything was good everything was fucking good and i'm not used to that when i have a particularly potent weed high it's mm, disarming to me not necessarily the most enjoyable experience because i have some very obsessive underthoughts like my personality i'm an obsessive motherfucker and that is something that i kind of pat down and try to like keep like from coming to the surface but when you're high on weed those things come to the surface like e every thought that you have happens all at once that's what it feels like at least to me and i have issues with obsessing over bullshit like obsessive compulsive shit it's not like obsessing over things that like normal people obsess over like i will obsess over like a word just a word and a word will get stuck in my head and it'll repeat it in this fucking megaphone into my fucking head and until i feel like i want to explode and it'll be like a word like fucking feather like it, it'll be like something that like i just thought of the word once and then my mind latches onto it and won't let go it's not like obsessing over things that like People obsess over like social things, being um, like, ha like insecurities that people might um, kind of try to keep from coming to the forefront, but are things that are like constantly going on in the back of their mind. It's not those kind of obsessive thoughts. It's like destructive, like concussive. There's no direction to the thought. It's just 
it feels like it's my 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 mind is a city and it's tearing it down and so i don't particularly enjoy being high on weed because of that and um also the body high and the head high those are two different experiences i do not like head highs because obsessive thoughts and i get obsessed with because weed will make you see like hallucinate like geometric shit um diamonds and triangles and i do not like that shit i do not care for it it makes me feel the the same anxiety i feel before a migraine where i'm seeing light where light feels like it's alive and has teeth the shapes feel like they have teeth and they are going to eat me alive and so i i'm not a particular fan of weed but in the shroom experience having a little bit of weed to like bring it down is helpful and my friend is um not like super well versed but well versed enough to be like a really good trip chaperone and just really helpful and nice and wonderful and um i could tell like while we were tripping that she felt comfortable enough to kind of allow like to to not be a chaperone and to allow her whatever is going on with her to come to the forefront and to not feel like she has to like walk me through the experience and she's like kind of giving like putting out her shit <laughs> and i like for a second i was the chaperone where i felt like oh shit you're you're going through some shit you are having some issues and let me help you and that was that was nice to feel like you know I'm, I'm being helpful i always like to be helpful i always like to um you know the people in my life i want to make their lives easier any way i can the shroom high was nice it was it's very different from a weed high we're like i don't know if this is a thing that a lot of people experience but i know it is a side effect of being high on weed hypothermia like just being feeling fucking freezing like cold just cold like cold shivering cold if i'm too high i will be so cold and it's horrible <laughs> I, fu I fucking hate it so i'm like seeing all these goddamn shapes and i'm obsessing over every fucking thought that i'm having and i, I think someone like anybody else around me could hear my thoughts I, I feel fucking paranoid and horrible and then also i'm freezing and i'm already a person that's cold all the time and so it's it's just not overall a pleasant experience but it was good for the, the shrooms shrooms feels warm it's extremely warm it's extremely comforting um just it's just really nice and there is some hallucination but it's different from weed um and i don't know exactly how to explain it everything's fuzzy the world is fuzzy and like those those memes about like having astigmatism and like all the lights look like starbursts the world is is filled with starbursts and it's delightful i really really enjoy it they have a little porch area we we're sitting at the porch and there's just trees and it's just like it's just nice it's just like a, a nice like fucking this, this scenery it's like, like setting the stage and it's it was like because the trees are kind of spooky like the the area is spooky because it's dark and it's rainy and it's like a forest and so looking out into it it's you know the the allure the the mystique of the forest and lost there and it's scary but also the allure the mystique of the forest it's beautiful it's full of life and it was interesting because when i'm looking at these trees they start to change place like they they shift everything shifts and it feels like the whole world is made of a series of layers and you could you could peel back those layers and look in between and understand how the world works through looking at those layers you could do that that is possible that is within your capability or you could just sit back and enjoy the whole picture and i decided that i want to just sit back and enjoy the the picture and it was so fucking nice and the way that i, I tried to explain it to my friend what it looked like i don't know if any of y'all have ever like 
in elementary school or or grade school just generally and I encountered these books where the pages are made out of plastic and each page has a series of whatever on it so like let's say because i'm talking about the forest um we're, we're painting a scene so like you would have to like open the book backwards in order to actually set the scene from beginning to end because the front of the book is all of the the layers piled up together and so you open the first page and you can see all the layers piled up together and as you open it you can peel back layers and so the first layer if we went to the back of the book the first layer would be like maybe a mountainscape there, there, there's mountains and you can see the sun and that's pretty much it and then the next page is going to be there's birds you have a few birds and you have like maybe some grass and there's a valley that's below these mountains and then the next page you turn it's trees we have like just a whole bunch of like the the big trees big 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 like fucking huge like the uh what is it carnivorous trees not like the trees with leaves um and then the next page you have the trees with leaves you have the deciduous trees um maybe on the next page you have like a bunny and a fucking badger it felt very much like those books growing up that i remember reading and i don't know like i don't know what they're called i tried to look it up and there was someone like that talked about it on reddit but the the book that the someone else like suggested that wasn't exactly it that's that's the way the world felt and that's the way the world looked and i i had a picture of some art that was very reminiscent um I'll post it. I'll post it. Well, you'll see it. <laughs> That's what the world looked like. And it's a little foreboding. It's a little spooky. But I've always been a fan of spooky. I've always... I, I haven't really shied away from it because those are, um, you know, the things in life that make sense to me. That I don't even remember how long we were sitting out there and the world looked like it was layers, but it was so fucking nice. It was so nice. And I'm, I'm really glad that I decided to go. And when she suggested the shrooms, I was like, you know what? Let's try it. Let's try it. I tr like, cause I, I trust you implicitly. Um, I don't think like the, 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 this experience is going to be the best experience I could possibly have doing shrooms because it's with you. And so if it's a bad experience, this is the best experience possible. And it ended up being really good. And so I think in the future, I might continue experimenting with it because I felt like in the peak of the high, I felt like, not like I was getting work done. Like it didn't feel like work, like, you know, exhausting, but it did feel like I was getting something done as far as like going through my thoughts and understanding like, I don't know, so, like the difference between weed and shrooms is like weed makes you have all your thoughts all at once. And it's kind of overwhelming for me for a person that's like constantly thinking. Shrooms kind of just takes your filter away and you, you become more talkative. Um, you're, you're more active. Uh, it doesn't make you really sleepy at all. Um, you do like drip. <laughs> like my, my nose was running and I, my eyes didn't get really all that water. My friends did. Like, she would cry. Um, but my nose was definitely running. And I don't know what exactly that is, but it definitely happened. Talking to my friend, it felt like the, the filters were just gone. We just didn't have filters. And, like, I, 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 could, I could actively filter myself. And I, I felt myself. Like, I felt me filtering myself. But... For the most part, I was open, but I didn't want to talk about anything negative. And I made a point in my mind, anytime I had a negative thought, not to say it. But anytime I had any other kind of thought, I would just go ahead and say it. And it felt that way, like, all night. And it was interesting to see because my friend, it seems like she has a lot of really just self-deprecating thoughts. And it, I, I always feel bad.
sad to to hear that shit because I want everyone around me to be happy. And that's not something that I had really put a whole lot of thought into. That like not necessarily being a people pleaser. I'm definitely a people pleaser, but I want people around me to be ha like to be enjoying their life. Like in any way I can make that happen, I want to do it because I feel like everyone in kind of deserves to have a life worth living. Even if I can't have one, at least I can see in other people the things that make them happy and maybe try to bring that to them. And that's what I mean by like feeling like I'm getting things done as far as like working through thoughts is like I was kind of seeing almost from an outsider view how I conducted myself, how I think about others and my relationship to the world. And it was, it was interesting. It was very interesting. There's a lot of self-judgment that I didn't think was present that definitely came to the forefront. And it was a, it was a negative thought. It was very much negative thoughts that were coming, like just bubbling up. And I was like, I'm not giving those things time and energy because what's the fucking point? These are, these are thoughts that are diluted first and foremost, because this is not the way that the world thinks of me. Like the thoughts that I was thinking were like, am I too self-absorbed? Am I kind of just a bad person for caring so much about myself? Do I talk too much? Did I say too much? Did I say something that hurt the person I'm talking to? Does that make me a bad person? Like it, it was like like this endless cycle of like don't talk about ED because that's gonna make my friend feel bad. ED is bad. It hurts people. It hurts me. So why would I want to put that on someone else? ED is bad, and I'm a bad person for having an eating disorder. It was just, it was, it was really interesting. It was really fascinating to be cycling through these thoughts, like almost like I'm cycling through laundry. I'm, I'm washing my laundry. This is my fucking laundry that I'm going through. And I'm seeing like how fucking dirty these things are because I've been wearing them and not washing them for years. And so it was very interesting to have that experience, to, to see that like these are thoughts that I have not, I've been, you know, suppressing. I've been suppressing them. And that they still exist. They're still there. And to have them, to, to experience them fully, is so goddamn unpleasant. <laughs> and with being with my friend, she had very similar thoughts where, like, do I talk too much? Am I, um, like, overly desiring of attention all the time? Am does that make me a bad person? Like, no. No. Everyone wants attention. Everyone wants to be fucking heard. People want to be understood. There's nothing wrong with that. If you feel like you talk too much, you could talk less. But also, just surround yourself with people that want to hear you. And so far, you've done it. I'm here. I fucking love being around you. I love hearing the things that you have to say. Your wife loves hearing the things that you have to say. She fucking adores you. So. So far, so good. You're doing a pretty fucking good job of that. And the people that are around you want to be around you. And it's it's really, like, sad. It's sad to hear that. And I, it, doesn't, it doesn't feel like, oh, man, I haven't been doing my job and being a friend and, like, you feel like I hate you. It feels like, damn, I, I didn't know... That this is a thing that you think about. That is kind of a torturous thing that weighs on your mind. And it made me think of Dig. Because he goes through similar thoughts. And I, I know he's he's very hard on himself. And he, he worries so goddamn much. He worries about every fucking scenario. And um, my friend had shown me this, this show called The Rehearsal. And <laughs> it was entirely too goddamn relatable. Um... They showed this like fucking flow chart of events and it's just endless for like every inevitability. And I hate to say inevitabilities because it's not fucking inevitable if it doesn't happen. Right? 
And so it sucks to, to feel like you have to plan for all these fucking things. It's horrible. And I couldn't even imagine like being so bogged down in worry. And I, I do worry about things. Absolutely. I'm, I'm not a person that's like without worry. But to, to see it to the extent that I saw it in the show, I was like, this is exactly, this is, I feel like this is exactly what Dig is going through. Because he worries about so many fucking things. And like, there's timelines upon timelines when you do that. It's like, how could you possibly keep all that information in your head? That's horrible. It's exhausting. It's, it's draining. It's, it feels like you can't even live your life because you're thinking about every scenario. Like you, you literally can't live your life. You don't have time. <laughs> when you're trying to look into the future, you don't have time. And there's only one future. There's only one set of events. It's hard not to, to worry about it. It's easy to say like you shouldn't worry about it. And I wish there was something that I could do so that he would feel like he's important enough to be able just to live his life and not worry about the future because there's nothing we can do to change it anyway. I mean, there's things you can do to like change your future, change your trajectory. But once things have been set in place, I mean, once the, the shit has started, once you've picked the path, I mean, just pick the path, the, make the decisions as they come, you know, like we definitely have free will. But to want to to paint out, to, to draw out the your whole fucking future, that seems like just so dull? Like, why would you want to know? But I understand not wanting to be surprised. But also, why would you want to know? <laughs> That just seems fucking stressful. And I wish I could just like supplant my my thought process into his head so that he wouldn't have to worry about that kind of shit. And this has been a long ass video. I should stop. But I really feel like I wanna I just need to get these thoughts out. I have a lot of fucking thoughts. And then I have a a, a Google Doc that I, I write in when I'm high. It's called High Thought. <laughs> but I wrote some interesting thoughts. It wasn't even that long, but I became more than one person, which that's something that I do, but it's a kind of more like a subconscious thing. Um, and it was interesting to see that, that kind of unfold while I was high. But um, I will do some more thinking and then come back to y'all and give you the, the more, I don't know, academic version of this this talk but there's a lot of stuff there's a there's a lot of stuff there's a lot there's a lot and maybe i'll try to do like a series so like you'll have like the the more layman feeling video that's like the in between between like this one where it's just like stream of conscious and then we'll have like the layman one where it's like kind of organized but not really and then the academic one maybe maybe we'll do that but We'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll fucking see. I'll uh, talk to y'all later.